Hello. This is just a quick video to explain how the eTapestry payment plugin works with the eTapestry mapping plugin um, if you are creating a gift. So the eTapestry payment plugin is designed to simply process a payment through your Blackboard gateway. It creates a very simple gift. Um, this is the form settings, the individual form settings, the gravity forms, general settings allows you to put in your eTapestry login and password and whether or not you want to match an account based on just the email address, which eTapestry allows you to do. Um, once you've entered that and saved it, then you go to your individual form settings and eTapestry payment is where we are now, creating a feed. At that point, if you are connected to your eTapestry account, these mapped fields will have values that reflect what is in your eTapestry account. It brings it down, if you will, from your account at eTapestry into this feed. So if you do not see your feeds here, your fields here, that means you are not connected to eTapestry and you either you need to troubleshoot that. Um, making sure your API is enabled and that your credentials are correct. So we have a connection. So I have funds listed and I can select one as well as a campaign approach and letter. The fund is required by eTapestry. Also, if you would like, you can um, map your eTapestry account reference field to your entry in Gravity Forms. And when you make a payment through the plugin, the payment reference field is recorded as the transaction ID. But you can also bring down the account field and put that into uh, your entry. So that's what this is. I'm simply mapping my reference field for the account to the entry. Now I have this set up and I have the donation greatest need, the MKT unsolicited, unsolicited approach and letter one. Now I'm also setting up a mapping feed. And what I wanna do in my mapping feed is add additional fields. That is the point of the mapping plugin when you are creating a gift, it works with any gateway, but um, specifically working with the Blackboard uh, payment gateway, which also creates a gift. The mapping plugin has a slightly different functionality. In that case, it actually recognizes that a gift was already created by the payment plugin and a successful payment has been made. And what it does at that point is says, I'm just going to update that gift rather than create another gift. If that, if you have this happening, if you have uh, two gifts being created for every transaction, you need to update to the latest version of the mapping plugin because it is designed to simply update the gift created and not create a second gift. So in this case, I have selected the transaction type as gift. And now I've, I've, um, I've mapped these fields, although that's not even necessary because we already have um, these fields are, are here not only to send up, but also to match. And we already have a gift at hand. So really what we want to do now is we simply want to add a field for, for um, additional field to the gift. So there's no point in selecting this because it's already taken care of in the payment plugin my fund campaign and approach as you can see i've selected a different uh, fund and a different letter in the mapping just to demonstrate because this will override your payment plugin settings because it updates anything that you send it's going to update that gift so if you don't want that to happen then you need to either deselect the fund or you need to um, select the same fund as before. 
And then I have, you know, I have other fields that can be mapped. And one of the things I'm mapping in this particular setup is I want the e the gravity forms entry ID to map to my gift in eTapestry. So now if I go to eTapestry and I find a gift, I can see exactly which entry ID I can find where that form was submitted. So that that's what I'm mapping in this particular setup. I'm just leaving everything else alone. So I've created this setup and then I ran a gift or I submitted the form. So as you can see in the record, I have the transaction ID, which is the actual ID of the payment. And then I have an account ID, which is the eTapestry account reference number. So if I go to eTapestry and look at my gifts, you can see um, gifts that were created today. And you can see my setup, um, First Bank AZ and Letter 2 overrode my payment. This is actually the, the mapping setup. And then if I go to user defined fields, you can see the reference number 601. So that is um, the actual eTapestry reference number. So let's just go back. Not sure. Yeah, 601 is the entry. So I can go back and I can find it. Everything uh, is completely synced up and matching. And as you can see, everything is recorded as well. So that's how the mapping plugin works in conjunction with the payment plugin. Now the mapping plugin will also do lots of other things. You can create just a contact entry that has nothing to do with a gift, in which case it is a standalone entry. It will not modify anything. It creates its own contact entry because you already have a gift. That may be something that you wanna do and it's perfectly acceptable to do that. It will just start from scratch even after a payment is made or without a payment, if you have just a newsletter form or something like that, then you can use the mapping plugin to create a contact entry or just create an account. And I think that's it. Thank you.